Ah, that intro never gets that. That intro never gets old. Uh, with with my own little uh, uh, take on it as well. But anyway, yeah. Uh, hello, my fellow Dream Chasers and Disney fans across the world. Welcome to the Kingdom of Isolation, where we isolate ourselves with the magic of Disney movies. Uh, this is the first time I have a um, a returning guest for this one. Uh, today we are going to be reviewing Bambi which was released in 1942. Uh, but like I said, my, my returning guest, uh, he was here for Dumbo uh, last time out. It is uh, from, he's from Movies and Milk, Mr. Michael Magori. Hello there, Fraser. Glad to be back. Yeah, Can't great. Wait. Yeah, great to have you back uh, as well. Uh, let's say, so, something, something I've just thought of, um, maybe for, maybe for uh, next year, granted it's going to be a few months away, but uh, maybe for yes. next <laughs> Maybe for next year on your channel, maybe get me on board with um, uh, with the Oscars. It'd be it'd be a good collaboration project. Oh yes, well that's assuming that the Oscars uh, are still on next year. But um, I would imagine uh, I would imagine they'll still I would imagine they'll still go ahead in some uh, capacity despite capacity. Dis dis despite the circumstances. Um, but anyway, um, let's say. Um, let's say just let's say just uh, reiterate um, how these uh, just reiterate how this works for those that are new to the, uh, the series. Uh, how this uh, series came about was uh, Disney Plus launched a couple of months ago here in the UK and I kicked off the opening, I kicked off uh, uh, the opening week of Disney Plus in the UK by reviewing Snow White and I set myself the mammoth task of reviewing every single Disney film that has been released. But for, for this first but for this initial run, I'm going to be going through the theatrical releases before tackling Pixar and the director video sequels. Those ones, those, those director video sequels, especially, they're going to be a, they're going to be um. Oh, they're going to be tough. They're going to be fun. To get <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, nevertheless, um, let's say. But uh, the reviews, uh, how we review these, uh, they work basically the same as my uh, regular film reviews and uh, fear not folks I'm going to have my first 2020 film review up at some point either this week mm -hmm. or next week and uh, and uh, it is one that uh, Michael actually recommended before lockdown started Mark Ruffalo in Dark Waters oh yes oh yes oh, I look forward to hearing your review on that uh, I'm, I'm sure you would have loved it those that haven't seen Dark Waters, uh, definitely check it out. It's definitely worth the watch. I mean, I mean, especially just from that, especially just from that trailer alone. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 a very tough watch. Uh, yeah, but um, speaking of tough watches, let's go on to Bambi. Of course, um, <laughs> I say, but um, but for those that are thinking to themselves, especially those that are across the pond, wait a minute, do wait a minute, Dark Waters didn't that came, come out in 2019? I'm taking the UK release date into account. So, uh, as far as my t top ten films of 2020 are concerned, I'm going by UK release date. So that's why you're more than likely going to see a beautiful day in the neighbourhood potentially in that top ten, maybe even at number one. But I won't say anything yet because I haven't watched ten 2020 films yet. <laughs> but um, but anyway, like you said, uh, on to Bambi. The so uh, the opening shot. Spoiler alert in place, by the way. <laughs> just sort of getting out of the way. Before we begin. As always. Um, but, uh, yeah, my goodness me. The opening shot is just... You just see panning through the uh, the forest. And the way that shot was put together, it was using the, uh, the multi-plane camera where you've got, like, different layers of that forest. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's just... The way that the way that opening shot put together just incredible, especially back in the nineteen forties when you didn't have uh, computers back then. Yeah, yeah, that accompanied with the music as well. The imagery and the music and all of it all comes together seamlessly, and it's it's, it's very nice. It's very relaxing. I feel. I feel Absolutely, like the opening it, it, it does. It does. It does give that sense of amazement and wonder just from that opening shot, and then and then you see uh, friend owl. Uh, swoop into shot. No, well, no, he's just getting up. No, well, actually, I know him and the woodland creatures are just getting up at the beginning. Yes, uh, because um, I think, uh, and this is and this is all 
uh, during this, this is all during the opening where we get, we're getting introduced to all the uh, the forest animals, uh, in, including Thumper. And what? then I say, and, uh, just I say, just the music, just like you said, the music is really, really relaxing. And then from there, and then from there, uh, it, it just all starts to pick up. And then um, you, you've got birds tweeting at each other, just like, um, hey, we've got some, we've got some big news. And that big news is the fact that Bambi's mother just gave birth to Bambi himself. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I didn't know Bambi was a boy until I watched the film, but uh, you know, you learn something new every day. Um, <laughs> we should maybe stress this. Uh, I think this is the first time on this show we've had someone on here who hadn't grown up with the film that we're discussing. Um, I didn't grow up with Bambi, so this is coming from a purely mature, well, somewhat mature viewpoint. Um, yeah. yeah, I said that, that, that's that's going to be the that's going to be the case um, uh, for for the next like half dozen reviews or so uh, when we're going through when I'll be going through the uh, the World War Two films uh, with my mum for for that um, for that stretch and then it will be on to Cinderella uh, after that. So, but uh, Bambi was one of those films in uh, my family household where. Nine times out of ten, it was one of those films that was just on all the time to the point where my to the point where my mum could just be doing something in the background and she could quote the film word for word at this point. <laughs> I can. Uh, that film was probably Toy Story in my family. It was always Toy Story in my household, constantly on repeat on loop. Ah, um, fair, fair dues. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Um, well, like I said, like I said, like I said we, get in, we get introduced to we get introduced to Bambi, and uh, oh boy, the uh, the quips that uh, uh, Thumper comes out with kind of wobbly, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so just 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 a small scolding from uh, uh, from his mother. Yes. <laughs> but um, that's it. and then um, and then th- and then when everyone's starting to. Uh, disperse, go their own ways. Um, when Bambi starts to get a little bit tired, um, Thump Thumper's like the last one to go, um, and asks Bambi's mum what she's gonna what she's gonna call him. And then at this at this point, I at this point I actually said when I was watching it earlier in the week, uh, I said uh, as soon as she said I'm gonna call, I think I'll call him Bambi. I said roll credits. It's uh, <laughs> Cin- cin- cinema, 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 cinema sins running gag for those that don't know. <laughs> this is just in case uh, anytime somebody mentions uh, the title of the film, roll credits. Ding! <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, and then from there, um, Bambi, Bambi uh, uh, walking and uh, quite. Um, do, do, do baby deer normally walk as quickly as they do? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not an animal person. I couldn't tell you. Uh, I literally just looked up uh, before doing this review what the female name for a deer is. Uh, so I'm probably the last person to ask. <laughs> it's a fawn, by the way. That's that's the name of a, a female deer. For, the, for those that don't um, know, and of course uh, the male, <laughs> the male equivalent being uh, the stag. Yes, the stag. Yeah, yes. Uh, but I know that's where my deer knowledge uh, ends, unfortunately. Um, I want to. I want to say they're kind of like giraffes. Maybe they they start walking from a very, very, very early age. I'm assuming. Yeah. But. That's it. And then, and then we've got, and then you've got uh, Bambi, um, playing with uh, Thumper and the rest of his um, rabbit, uh, um, uh, rabbit, 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 uh, rest of Thumper's rabbit siblings, um, mm-hmm. where, which is prob- which is probably the first time we had that. Uh, a uh, running gag with rabbits that they have uh, uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of offspring. <laughs> a lot of offspring. <laughs> uh, I know that's one of the funny funniest running gags in Zootopia. I feel or Zootropolis, whatever you call it. Uh, Z- Zootopia in North America, Zootropolis over here in uh, Europe and the UK. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, um, they're uh, they're teaching Bambi the ways of the forest. Of course, and uh, and and that's then, and then that's when and then that's when when we get to see Bambi uh, start talking for the first time, uh, try, trying to say bird 
first. Boom. <laughs> That's it. And then, and then, and then on on the last on the last attempt, just uh, just like uh, scares everybody. <laughs> and then just boom, everybody's off the log. And then, <laughs> and then the rabbits are all excited. Yay, Bambi talked. <laughs> and then and then suddenly. Does so they shut up for the rest of the film? <laughs> yeah. Sees a butterfly, calls it bird. Thumper says it's a butterfly. <laughs> Bambi then sees flowers, calls them butterflies, and then <laughs> and then Thumper says says they're actually flowers. And then oh boy. <laughs> then we get introduced to flower, the yeah. skunk. Yes. Which is which is probably. I mean, even I mean I mean watch, watching that scene back, even I ended up in. Uh, uh, st- uh, ended up in thumper levels of um, laughter territory because it's like wait that's not a flower that's a, <laughs> that's a, and and flower can flower uh, conveniently uh, cuts uh, cuts thumper off yeah 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 like he's been called flower <laughs> and I didn't know flower was a he as well I, I'm just uh, I'm just learning new things today. Uh, I, I didn't realise that Flower was a boy until much later on in the film. We'll get to that a bit later, I'm assuming. But yeah, I, I didn't. I see, yeah, th- this is another one of those uh, short Disney films which is only about an hour long, uh, sim- similar, similar to that of Dumbo, which was uh, only about an hour long as well. Yeah, I think it's an hour and ten minutes or so, this one. Slightly longer than Dumbo. R- round about that sort of time frame, yeah. Uh, and then we get to the... And then we get to the next uh, section where you've got Bambi and Thumper walking through the forest. Thunderstorm starts and they head home. And then... Uh, April shower. Yes, that sequence and the the way that was animated with just the, the raindrops uh, in time with the music. It's satisfying, it's relaxing. It's... Yeah. And then sort of reminded me of Fantasia. In a way, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Now that you, now you mentioned that, there, there is there is Fantasia vibes in that April shower sequence. It's throughout the entire film, I think. There's a couple of sequences that sort of feel like Fantasia esque. It's just sort of music. Yeah. The music carries the story for the most part. Not that much talking in this. Yeah. Which I really liked. And that and 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 for me. And for me, sometimes that's for me. Sometimes that's all you need when it comes to um, when it comes to storytelling. Sometimes you just need what's on the screen, the music, no dialogue, and that's it. Yeah, and the, the animation in this is uh, beautiful. I think this is one of Disney's best looking films. Absolutely, I, think I should just say that up front. Yeah, and um, and while I'm on the subject of um, uh, that sort of example of storytelling, let's say let's say Mulan's. Uh, a Mulan scene where uh, she takes her takes her father's place in the uh, in the in the Chinese army to fight uh, to fight the Huns. That whole scene where she she takes the armor, cuts her hair, and oh yeah, oh, oh that's yes. that is one of I say I mean I mean you said there that's one uh, Bambi's. This is one of the best uh, best animated films for you. That mm-hmm. one scene from Mulan is one of the best scenes I've ever watched, and I knew. I mean, even when even when I was younger, I was only like five, six years old at the time when I, mm-hmm. when I got Mulan on um, on video for the first time, and I knew that those sort of scenes were going to have a big impact on me when I was um, w- when I would get older. Yeah, and. Aye, aye. No, I, I like I like moments like that, especially in animation, where they just like the the animation speak for itself. Um, yeah, but uh, but like I say, we've we've still got a, we've still got a fair way to go before we get to um, before, we get, line, yes. before we get to the line. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of fun covering the uh, the Disney Renaissance films because out of all the Disney films that I've watched, apart from Bambi, the Renaissance films are probably part of that select group of films that no matter how many times I watch it, I still get enjoyment out of it every time I watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, the Disney Renaissance films are, are very good. Yeah, I say, I say th- those are the sort of films that um, the people like me and Michael grew up with. Yeah, yeah, no, they were coming out as... We were, we were coming into the planet. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, but anyway. as of now, we are still on the golden age. Yes. The last film of the golden age of Disney. Yes, before we get into the uh, World War Two films, and then once that whole, I so said, once that whole uh, April shower sequence is um, uh, is out of the way, it's, it's, I mean, the, I mean, the, I mean, the crashing of the symbols to to symbolise the the lightning strikes. I mean, that is, whew, oh, yes, wowzers! No. <laughs> sort of feels like you're in one. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's very striking. And, and then, Pardon the pun. <laughs> and and then you've and then of course you've got the uh, and then of course you've got those uh, the vocals in the background as as well, um, uh, being symbolic of the, the um, fire. Uh, not not the, not the fires not the fires necessarily. Uh, it's uh, symbolic of the winds that are blowing throughout this storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's gives me chills just thinking about it. It's uh, it's a very yeah. As, as, and like I say, these are the sort of things that these are the sort these are the sort of things back in 1940 that needed a lot of work, and they didn't have computers mm-hmm. back then. So to be able to get all that put together, and I've said I've said it numerous times throughout this series, and I'll say it again: being able to craft absolute magic out of those particular sequences that shows how amazing Disney as a whole was. Has been. Or is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, anyway. and then on to the next sequence where we are, where we see um, Bambi and his mum heading to the meadow uh, for the first time, and that's when we start to, and that's, and this is the point in the film where we get those subtle little hints of what's going to come later on. Yes, it's it's the first moment where it starts getting a little bit serious. Up until this point, it's it's nice and fluffy. It's Besides the storm, I guess the storm is sort of foreshadowing is uh... another bit of foreshadowing. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a valid point. Yeah, a little bit of foreshadowing for when they enter the meadow. Yeah, that's it. And then, but then, um, once Bambi, once once um, once the month sees it's all all safe, uh, there, and then, and then the music starts to pick up in being so all happy and whimsical again. And then um, yeah, yeah. A, a, another one of my another one of my favourite moments from the film, where um, you've got um, you've got a, a duck with a group of uh, ducklings taking to water for what I would imagine it would be the first time for the ducklings, and then yeah. and then the last duckling at the end uh, just it's, it dips a little toe in and just like it's cold, <laughs> and then Bambi comes back along, just rushes over, no regard for what's uh, around them, and just splashes the duck, and he's just like. Are <laughs> serious. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, do we get introduced to the fawn after this as well? Is this... Yes, yes, we do. We get introduced to yeah. Feline after uh, Thumper goes through the uh, eating greens as a special treat scene. Oh yes, yes. That's a, that's a cute little moment. Just whenever Thumper talks, it's very cute. Yeah. Um, I say, I say, like I say, like I say, this is where we get introduced to uh, uh, Feline for the f- for the first time, and uh, and Bambi. I say, I say, Bambi. Sort so, sort of a sort of a little sort of another little um, uh, cliche for these uh, for these sort of uh, uh, love story introductions that one of them ends up being very shy of the other. Yeah, yeah. But um. But see, but uh, it's a case that uh, let's see. Um, uh, I'm just trying to I'm trying to work out how to word this. Uh, then you've got um, let's see, F- Feline and Bambi starting to uh, play with each other. Uh, Bambi ends up in like uh, like uh, surrounded by long grass, small puddle. Um, yeah. Feline popping her head uh, all over the place and uh, deciding to. Deciding to uh, lick Bambi uh, on occasion, and then and then one and then one lick too many, rubs it off his face, and then it's a case of um, okay, this is going to get interesting. Pops her head through Bambi, vroom, and Felicia's like, um, did I do something wrong? And then uh, and then they start chasing each other. Yep, a little romantic scene. And, and then the music. And then we end up with a fanfare, and the music becomes more bombastic 
as this is where we get introduced to the almighty prince of the forest. Well, the, the great prince of the forest. Yes, but suggested to be Bambi's father. I yes, I have heard. I said there have been a lot. There have been theories that have been. There's been theories that have been circulating for a while now that, and a lot of them say practically the same thing. That yes, the great prince of the forest is Bambi's father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's he's a very stern-looking individual of course and i say and just i say in just seeing him walking towards towards everybody and and while the music isn't as bombastic as it was uh, moments ago the you still get you still get that sense of sense of importance when he makes his presence known for the first time yeah, yeah, yeah. No, again, it's the animation. It's, it, it, it barely moves. It, it just sort of has little twitches and flicks to show that uh, yes, he is the big boss. Yeah, you don't want to mess with him. See, I see, and and you, and you said you said it right there. It's, it's those it's, it's those subtle moments that sometimes have the biggest impact. Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, again. The animation in this is, is, is beautiful. Absolutely. Beautiful. And then, um, and then, and then with, um, and then with Bambi's mum talking a bit more about the Great Prince of the Forest before introducing him as such. Uh, then after that's all out of the way, a um, lot of birds flying overhead, and uh, that's and that's when we get to hear the um, the music of uh, just simply. Man, the music of man. Yes, yes. That's one thing that I really appreciate about this. Um, if they ever do a live-action remake of Bambi, they'll probably have a. They'll probably show the man. They'll probably be a big mustache twirling hunter villain. Um, if they decide to do a live-action remake, but one thing that I really like about this film is that you barely see man. Uh, you barely see us on screen. Yeah. Um, I see the. I see the only. The only the only glimpses we see are from uh, the dogs late on in the film, the f uh, the campfire, which ends up becoming yeah. a forest fire, and the music, the gunshots, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's um, very good, very good. Again, if they done it, in, if they done it today, they would have easily just had one individual hunting for Bambi. Yeah, uh, I say, and and on that look, and on that, I say, and with and with that in mind, uh, definitely good, definitely good luck getting through this without uh, having a PG rating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, because because well, we've not got to that scene yet. I don't think. Oh, oh yeah, oh th oh that scene. Yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, we'll get to that very shortly, folks. Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, then. And then we see the leaves starting to fall off the trees, and then we get introduced to winter, and then, and then Bambi just being this curious young kid. I mean, we've all we've all been there. We've always been very curious about the world around us, wondering yeah. what uh, all of that white stuff to, uh, to quote him. Um, <laughs> and the, the mother says it's snow, and then see, and then you see the, um, and then you see Bambi taking, uh, st taking to the snow for the first time, and then. Uh, st starts to run and then ends up hitting a deep patch and then boom straight in. <laughs> Aye, this is this is another cute little moment in the film where they're just sort of yeah. skating together. Um, yeah, yeah, and th and then and then we see and then we see Thumper and then we see Thumper again um, uh, skating on the ice without much uh, trouble. Yep. <laughs> but uh, I'm jealous of him. I, I was never good at ice skating myself. Yeah, that's it. I'm uh, more like Bambi on ice. That's it. Uh, oh, yeah, like Bambi on ice. Did you guys ever wonder <laughs> where that scene came from? It was from this scene, because Bambi <laughs> tried to step, tried to step, trying to uh, stand up on the ice, and then just vumf falls down. Tries to get up again, back down, and and and, and the music matches the movements beat for beat. 
every time Bambi's trying to get up onto the get up onto his feet on the ice. Yeah, you know, again, it's it's that's those satisfying music cues come back in. Yeah. So, I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, don't be too surprised if we if I end up talking about music a lot throughout these um, uh, th- throughout these reviews because uh, hey, music was my favourite subject at school. For those that don't know, was it? I, I, I never knew that. I was I was never one for music. I was always more about the visuals. But now that I'm older, I'm growing a bit more appreciative towards music and their yeah. importance, especially in films. And there's and there's a reason why when it comes to uh, uh, talking to people about um, films away from reviews, nine times out of ten, when it comes to talking about a film with friends in a uh, social situation, the soundtrack. Is nine times out of ten one of the first things that I um, that I talk about? You discuss, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's it. And then, and then we get to the point in this sequence where um, we finally get Bambi on his feet. Uh, Thumper managing to uh, give Bambi a bit of momentum on the ice, and then Bambi's just like, "Wait a minute, I think we're going a little bit too fast here." And then, and then, you, and then you see him start to wobble, and then it gets to the point where down on it he goes down again and then they just plow into uh, a big pile of snow and then yeah. and then we hear flower who's hibernating yeah yeah uh, they, they learn about hibernation yeah and and this and this is the and this is this is another great thing about this film it's actually they actually teaching the youngsters about uh, the various uh, the various goings on in uh, um, uh, in the forest, uh, what the creatures are, what everything in the forest is, um, what the snow is, and and the um, and the um, and and what and why certain and why certain animals hibernate throughout uh, winter. Yeah, yeah, no, the whole film feels like a, an animated nature documentary. Yeah, um, absolutely. And it does it in a way that I don't think would bore kids. Like it is very easy to sort of have messages in films and then just have the message completely overshadow the film. But thankfully with this, I don't think, I don't think this film suffers from that problem. Um, yeah. And, and then, and then uh, we, we mentioned, we mentioned the, the music cues throughout the storm sequence um, for the April showers earlier. And those music cues come into play again throughout the uh, the, the winter storms when you see uh, all the deer, especially Bambi and his mum, walk, walking through the snow trying to find... Um, shelter. Uh, uh, not just shelter, but bark on the, um, on the trees as well. And it mm-hmm. gets to the point where the storm's finished, there's, there's very little bark left for them to be able to reach. Yeah. And uh, then... We get to probably the most infamous scene in Disney history, and this is taking oh, no. this is taking all films, this is taking all the Disney films into account. This is probably the most infamous out of all the scenes in Disney history. It's, I say, even even for back then, they were doing a lot of dark stuff back then, but this yeah. but this scene ranks up there as one of the most infamous. In all of Disney history, is this, uh, is, this, uh, is this the passing of Bambi's mother? Yes, we have come <sighs> to that point of the film. The music, again, very whimsical, uh, where you see the first f- sprouts of spring grass, mm-hmm. and then you hear the man music start to build up again. And that's when, yeah. And that's when Bambi's mum thinks, right, there's trouble somewhere, and and off they and uh, they just run as fast as they can back to their um, back to their shelter, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I I would show what happened, but uh, one, copyright issues, and two. Don't want to traumatize. Don't want to be traumatizing any um, viewers in these uh, in these reviews. Yeah, yeah, no, it's um, 
Yeah, again, it would be easy to to show the death on screen, but again, with this but, film. But the fact, the fact that the fact that all you get of this is the gunshot, and then yeah. and then the great prince of the forest saying, "Your mother can't be with you anymore," and those it is very... and Bambi's cries for for his mum, it's yeah, it's, it's haunting. Very, and and the music doesn't help either. No, no, no. It's, uh... Aye, no, it's a tough one. It's, yeah. uh... um, it's the predecessor to the Lion King death, the yeah. death of Mufasa. And, and granted, and granted, uh, the Lion King death wouldn't come for another uh, fifty-two years. Yeah. Oh, Ribbons. <laughs> um. But then. Uh... So I... But then uh, I, th- I think I think one of the I think one of the biggest issues after uh, after that uh, traumatic scene uh, is it's the uh, the sudden change of tone. Yes. When it be- when it becomes spring once again. Yeah, yeah. No. Aye. No, I don't. I don't know if tone was maybe a big thing for Disney back in the day because yeah. again we were talking about Dumbo last time and. That film was plagued with tonal issues. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, I don't think, I don't think the tonal issues are as bad. But um, yeah, no, the scene that follows Bambi's mother's death is uh, it's rather uh, it's, it's, it's off-putting. Too too drastic a contrast, if that's how you want. Yeah, to put yeah. It. Mm-hmm. I know it's. And then. And then, and and this, and then, so we're like, we're like halfway to three quarters of the way through the film, and this is the first time we see Friend Dowl since the start of the film. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice welcome surprise. I, I like Friend Dowl. Yeah. I like all the characters in this film. There's yeah. no one in this film, unlike in Dumbo, where I was like, God, I don't want them on my screen. Get them off. <laughs> um, yeah. I like all the characters besides man, but again, like I said, that's not really a character. It's more of a just a, an an a, a, an ominous presence throughout yeah. the film. Yeah, and then um, and and then and then we get to see the grown-up versions of Bambi, Thumper, and Flower, and that's the point where we get uh, and that's the point where Friend Al mentions the um, mentions. Uh, Mentions the inevitability that um, our our three protagonists are gonna end up falling, per- love. falling in love. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, oh boy, uh, for Flower and Thumper's uh, encounters, especially. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, Again, I, d- I didn't know Flower was a boy up until this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. This is one of those cases of when talking about this film, how do you explain this to the younger people? <laughs> Again, I think they've done it very well. Um, yeah, but 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 of course, but of course, but of course, looking back on it now, is it, is it definitely um, subtle adult jokes. Yes, yes, death. very subtle. Yes. Because <laughs> the kiss that flower, because the kiss that flower gets, it's a it's a case of. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll leave you to fill in the blanks. <laughs> so... But uh, but Thumpers is a uh, is a bit more interesting to say the least. Um, yes, he gets um, he gets entranced in a sense by this beautiful rabbit lady. Um, with, with with her with her singing as well. I say it's mainly the it's mainly the singing. I say I say for me it would be the singing that would uh, catch my attention. But of course this being a this being a love story, it, it's the uh, it's the appearance as well on top of that. And flowers and uh, flower, uh, thumper. <laughs> um, I say thumper's just like oh my word, she is beautiful. <laughs> I say, I say, I say, it's just, it's just, a, just, just a little. I say, even, if, even something as uh, simple as the, uh, the, uh, the waving with the ears. Um, I say, she's waving them normal speed, and 
Thumper's just like uh, very going crazy, uh, very very <laughs> slow, and then and then and and then and then, um, and then the rabbit lady comes um, uh, closer to him, and then that's it. And you can see you can see the you can that's like he takes a big gulp. You can see his eyes starting to pulse. His ears getting in a twist, and then <laughs> she gives him a kiss, and then. He, I think, I think compared to compared to how his uh, feet have been thumping previously, it's just like <laughs> like Jack Hammers. Pretty much. <laughs> I think, and, th- and then and then Bambi ends up encountering uh, Flynn again, but uh, just before that, uh, he sees Thumper uh, having fun with um, uh, the, the the lady rabbit. Not that kind of fun, folks. <laughs> she's just playing with his ear and then just uh that's it and just uh, sat there enjoying it. That's it. And, <laughs> and, and and then uh, and then she she flicks it to the point where uh, the flicks are matching the speed of his th- um his his feet thumping his feet mm-hmm. yeah yeah i know it's a lot, a lot of sexual innuendos in this in this uh, little yeah moment. <laughs> that's it and, and like I say, this is where we get in. This is where we see uh, Bambi encounter uh, Flynn again uh, for the first time since they were kids, and and then uh, even Bambi ends up getting uh, 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 Twitter painted. Uh, that that's the word the friend Dal used in the film. <laughs> so can't blame us for that one. Blame friend Dal for that one. Aye, it's Twitter painted. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I say then. I say then. I say the kiss that uh, Feline gives Bambi ends up putting him into some sort of trance as well, and they end up on white, and they end up on a, they end up on giant white fluffy clouds in some sort of dream sequence, and then, and then it's just that music cue, sharp music cue, back to reality, and you've got another, and then you've got another stag in the picture, and you're just, and that's when you're thinking, oh boy. We're going to see a battle for dominance here. Yes, and, and uh, this is when the animation is at its best. I feel. Yeah, I see. I see. It's it's more the it's more the lighting in the background, um, than it's the lighting in the background more than anything else that helps it uh, stand out because because that lighting in the background just um, it, it covers Bambi and his rival as just shadows essentially and and you said you said it right there that's what makes this scene stand out in such a powerful way yes no it's um it's one of the most stylistic moments of the film um now i've been praising the animation up until this point uh, i like how borderline realistic it is uh, i mean they've still got the big cartoon eyes and everything but um, the animation as a whole is very natural, I feel, and uh, yeah. But in this scene, it's it's very stylized and very unique, and why well, I liked it a lot. Yeah. It Add to the intensity of the scene. Yeah, and 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 the music and the music during that scene as well. It's it's one of those scenes. It's one of those scenes where the music is just on point throughout that whole sequence. Yeah, yeah. No, again, it adds adds intensity. Absolutely. Um, and then once Bambi claims ultimate victory, <laughs> he ends up he ends up spending more time with uh, Feline, and Feline. then and then after that, uh, the Great Prince of the Forest um, uh, encounters Bambi. After Bambi finds uh, what appears to be a, a camp set up with a campfire, and yep, that's man for you. Yep, the uh, forest ends up catching on fire. Yeah, but and... there's, a, there's but there's a couple of bits. There's a couple of bits we need to go through before that. Oh wait a minute, aye, right, yeah. okay, yes. Because uh, we've got the um, uh, uh, the. I was, I, was, I was thinking of I was thinking, I was thinking of ferrets there. No, so it's it's pheasants. Oh, pheasants. pheasants. Oh, yes, yeah. that's the one. That's the one. Um, the scene that we mentioned in the Dumbo review. Yes, yes, that's what it was. I see. I see. Uh, the the fe- I was like one pheasant flies out of uh, the um, 
out of the safety of their um, hiding place. Gunshot, and it all, it turns in, it just, it's all manner of chaos. Just, let's say, just the music, the gunshots, the, uh, the cuts between the different animals just running away or flying away in some cases. And then when you when yeah. you hear, and then when you hear that the last gunshot of that first part of the sequence, the music I mm-hmm. well, say so the music just silence for a, for a brief moment, and then the music starts to pick up again. That's it. It's just it's just, it's just yeah. the just the fast strings, and then it's just this huge pack of hunting dogs chasing mm-hmm. Feline, and then and then it gets to the point where she's on a cliff edge, surrounded by these. Uh, Hunting dogs calls out for Bambi, and then Bambi uh, comes in, saves the day. Like the man he is. Yep, uh, man- manages to get, manages to keep, manages to fight the dogs off, uh, which allows Feline to escape. He manages mm-hmm. to stop the dogs from um, overwhelming him. He get, he goes up uh, another, he goes up another um, uh, rock face. Uh, which has um, loose loose rocks all over the pl- loose rocks all the way up to essentially bury these hunting dogs in that rubble. Essentially, um, giant leap of faith, gunshot, boom, and Bambi's injured. Yeah, didn't didn't expect it. Um... Yes, yeah, so it, it's one it's one of those moments that just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, no. Again, the, this whole sequence is very intense. To go back to that scene with the pheasants, um, fun fact for you, I actually had to pause the film immediately after that scene just to sort of get myself back together because uh, wow. that scene was especially intense. Uh, I don't know what it was about it. It was just, yeah, no, that pheasant uh, saying, "No, I can't take this anymore. I can't. I, I need. I need to go. I need to. I need to try and escape this." And uh, does he make it? And unlike Bambi's death, I think. Wait, do you do you see the body? No. Of the person? You, no, you, you don't. Right you again, don't, it's just implicated. You don't. You don't see the body of. Uh, you don't see the body of Bambi's mum after she gets shot. But you see the you see the pheasant that that got shot. You see the pheasant just just plummets to the ground, and then yeah, yeah. and that causes everybody to disperse. Yeah, no, I no. Again, I had to I had to pause the film for like five seconds, and I was like, right, Michael, you've only got another. 10, 15 minutes of this, you can you can take it. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's a it's a Disney film. You can get through this. Um, and I don't blame you. If I was in your position, yeah, I'd have. If I was in your position, yeah, I'd have probably done the same. Yeah, no, I'm thankful that I didn't see this film as a kid. I've got a feeling I would have been absolutely traumatized. Y- y- yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even that. The, the pheasant isn't that much of a, a big character in the film. It's not a main character. It's not even a side character. It's just a little one-off side character. And yeah, I, I don't know what it was about it. It's just why. Oh, it's it's just it's just the fact that I just didn't expect it. Yeah. Um. I I don't think anybody would have expected it even back in 1942. Yeah. <sighs> And then after, and then after, the, and then after all, and then after all that happened, that's when the fire comes into play. Yeah, um, and the, man and, has completely yeah. destroyed the forest. And this is, the, and this is the climax of the film. It's it's another intense sequence, but uh, but mm-hmm. you you do tend to find that with um, uh, most films like this that there is going to be that intense climax before the happy ending. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but that was one thing that was lacking in Bambi. I feel uh, uh, no, sorry, in Dumbo, uh, a big. Well, oh, actually, no. The scene where Dumbo flies is quite a climax. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But I say, but it didn't have, but it didn't have that same level of intensity as this final yeah, scene yeah. does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's uh, very, very intense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then I say, but then, um, but then uh, a lot, a lot of the animals, they, a lot of the animals, they managed to escape. Including Bam, including Bambi and the prince and the great prince of the forest, and then it's just—I mean, just that shot of, just that shot of the forest just in flames in the background, and then you're just seeing, bit piece by piece, just the various animals that managed to get out, and Feline looking for 
looking for Bambi, Bambi. and um, I see, I see, I see. This is some. This is something I couldn't quite. This is something I couldn't quite wrap my head around. Looking back on it now, um, he gets he gets shot. Uh, he gets shot, and then he manages. And then somehow, a couple of minutes later, he's able to walk okay, as if the injury didn't even happen. Yeah. Well, you need to you need to end the film somehow, and you can't end it with Bambi dying. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true, but. I said, but 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 at the end, of, but I would imagine, I would imagine the workaround they would have had for that is that um, try, trying to get out of the forest, they would have been on. It, it would have, it would have been some sort of um, adrenaline rush moment, just just the adrenaline, not concerned about the pain, just get mm-hmm. out of there as quickly as you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nah. I say, I say, I say that, that's the only conclusion I can uh, come up with, but. Um, <laughs> But like I say, Feline and I say Feline and Bambi reunited, and then uh, it's and then it's sometime later. Thumper has his own kids. Flower has his a um, uh, youngster, and uh, Bambi and Feline end up having two fawns uh, of, of their, their own. own, of their own. And the last words are, "Prince Bambi ought to be Prince Bambi ought to be mighty proud." And then you see. And then you just, and then it's just that last shot of the camera zooming out, and the Great Prince of the Forest, essentially, from from what I can gather, um, letting Bambi become the new Prince of the Forest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there yeah. we go. And that's the end of the film. I shut up. It's it's basically, it's not not much of a story. Um. Well, there is a three-act structure there, but um, yeah, it it does just sort of feel like a, a circle of life type of deal. Um, again, it just sort yeah. of feels like the predecessor to the Lion King, um, and I I really like this one. Yeah, um, absolutely. I was like, and uh, I've uh, I've got I've got my scores. I say I've got my scores for each of the um, uh, sections uh, in front of me. Uh, I presume I presume you'll have your scores as well, Michael. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I yeah, yeah. No, I do. So, um, so, f- so first off, we've got. Um, so first off, as always, we've got uh, the story. Now, I gave this uh, a nine out of ten. Uh, pr- yeah, I say pr- primarily because um, uh, t- what stopped it from getting a ten was the uh, was the was the um, was the uh, uh, the drastic change of um, the drastic change of tone from. Bambi's death, uh, Bambi's mum's death, to the um, uh, to the introduction of spring again, where you see uh, Bambi, Thumper, yeah. and Flower end up becoming uh, uh, grown yeah. ups. I say, that was that's like that. That's the only thing that really stopped. Oh, mm-hmm. That's that's the only thing that stopped it from getting an, uh, a ten for me. Uh, what did you give the story at a ten? I also gave it a nine. Um, like I said, it's. It's not got much of a three. Well, it does have a three act structure. It's not, um, but I know this film just makes you, gives you the feels, makes you feel everything. You feel happy. Yep. You feel sad. You're shocked. I, well, at least I was at one point. Yep. Like I said, um, and it's just, I, no, it's, it's it's very good. But I do agree with you that, that sometimes the tone is a bit drastic uh, in shifting it. I. So I know I also gave it a nine. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so for the characters, the characters I gave, I gave a nine uh, as well because 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 I felt that because I felt because I felt that some of the characters uh, I felt that some of the characters uh, didn't get enough uh, screen time, especially at the end where you don't actually see uh, Thumper and Flowers. Um, uh, other halves at the end as yeah, well, yeah. which mm-hmm. begs the question: What happened to them? Yeah, no, I also gave. I think no, I gave characters an eight, um, ah. but it was mainly just the same issue as you. Um, there's there's quite a lot of focus, especially on Thumper in the beginning, mm-hmm. and then sort of midway through the film, just sort of vanishes up until the end. And I like Thumper a lot, and I, I wish he was just in the film a bit more. But it's just a personal preference. Yeah. Um, I say like, each each to their own, as I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, no, I gave the characters an eight. 
Uh, vi- I say visuals. Visuals. That was another nine. For, that was another nine for me. Because uh, as I, uh, as I, I can't quite put my finger on what it what it is that stops it from getting a ten. But mm-hmm. um, but but if I say visuals, like it's just um, it's like I say that opening shot with the, the multi plane camera, and it's actually they actually use a multi plane uh, camera at the end of the film uh, as well, and just yeah. And just uh, we mentioned the lighting during um, uh, the the battle between uh, Bambi and his rival for for dominance over um, uh, Feline. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, well, uh, Fraser, I hope you're holding on to something here because uh, uh, you know how I said in the last video, I, I, I barely ever give tens out. Um, the, I gave the animation in the film uh, a ten. How's about uh, that? Yep. Yeah, uh, no, there was nothing wrong with the animation in this film. I think it's, I think it is Disney's best looking film, um, uh, and for a film that's quite old, um, mm-hmm. I was rather surprised. I was expecting it to maybe be a bit dated in some points, but and s- yeah, some, no, somehow it isn't. Yeah, yeah, um, it's, it's like you said. I didn't know uh, it was the first film to use the multiplane uh, sort what? of camera. Well, actually, 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 it wasn't because um, I say Snow White used it. Um, I say Snow White used it on on a couple of occasions uh, as well. I say, uh, I say uh, a, a lot of the a lot of the animated films back then, um, uh, Disney or otherwise, uh, mm-hmm. they they used that um, uh, multiplane camera. Layers. Well, I think uh, they mastered it here. Um, yeah. I, th- I, th- I think that, I think that's I think that's definitely one of the reasons why uh, the visuals for both of us got such a high score that they perfected the um, the multiplane camera work in this mm-hmm. film. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's ah, no, it's very good, very good, beautiful, yeah. I would say, beautiful. No, that's not a word I I just throw about willy nilly. Yeah, that's like that's like. In, in order to, in order to be um let's say I say and, and that's and that's the thing when it comes to um uh, talking about these sort of things be it fav- being uh, favorite films or uh, sometimes favorite uh, video games uh, I don't throw I say I don't throw uh, I don't throw best of all time around that often I I often say it's just it's one of my favorites but mm-hmm. to be up there as one of the best of all time you must have you must have done something very special to yeah. grab somebody's attention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, the the soundtrack I the soundtrack I had to give um, the soundtrack I had to give an eight because I felt that they um, I, th- I I felt that they didn't have I, th- I felt that they used um, man's theme a bit too much in some mm-hmm. in some areas. Yeah, but but apart from, but apart from that, uh, every, everything else works really well on the soundtrack front. Yeah, no, I also gave it an eight, and I think it's just mainly because there isn't as many memorable songs in the film. Yeah, um, I say, cause, cause and that's one thing you come to expect with Disney. But um, I say, I say there's there's only like three or four in the film, if that. Yeah, April Showers I remember very well. But, it, um, that's the all one, the rest of the songs. Just that, that's the one. Ev- that's the one everybody knows. Yeah, um, but outside of the songs, the the music does what it needs to do. It does make you feel intense when it, you need to feel tense. It makes you feel happy when you need to feel happy. It's yeah. No, I, I give it a, a high eight. Yeah. Um, again, it's just wasn't it that many memorable. Songs. Uh, I don't think I'll be singing along to the Bambi soundtrack anytime soon. Yeah, and then the last one, uh, "Test of Time," uh, the legacy that this film uh, has. Uh, now, now I had to, I had to be realistic with uh, with this one, um, mm-hmm. and realistically, I couldn't I couldn't give it any more uh, uh, than an eight because uh, I think I think part, I think part of that's down to. Uh, I think part of that's down to what hap- what happened with um, uh, Bambi's mum's death. That um, that uh, there, there were people that actually thought that that was um, that that moment was uh, too dark, even by ni- 
even even by those even by 1940s uh standards yeah. and, and and we've seen our we've seen our fair share of dark disney moments throughout that time period the forest sequence in snow white uh pleasure island uh in pinocchio that donkey transformation especially yeah. <laughs> uh, being, i think seeing monstro just my word i mean just that pretty much speaks yeah. for itself not pink elephants. the pink elephants in dumbo <laughs> which we went into great detail on uh uh last time out and um and in fantasia night on bald mountain that's one of those that's one of those rare examples of a scene from a film that uh, gave me nightmares oh, as, a, right. okay. as, as a youngster and um I say, uh, what what are the other ones? I think everybody can, I think everybody can agree on this one. Uh, the the Jaws theme. Mm-hmm. As soon, as, I say, there was one point during, there was one point when Jaws was on BBC One during the uh, Christmas season, uh, two thousand and one, yeah. I think it was. Um, yeah. I say, as, as as soon as I recognised the music, I was just like, I just I just legged it <laughs> out of the living you room. Had to run. <laughs> um. Yeah. And, I, in it, terms it, of scenes that gave me nightmares as a kid, uh, it was uh, Judge Doom from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. His big reveal at the oh end. Oh my! Um, that's um, me, ooh, that begs. The I mean, it's one of my favourite films of all time now. Yeah, but uh, it, that that begs uh, the, that begs the question. Yes, it's a live action animation hybrid. Mm-hmm. Even though it wasn't, uh, even though it wasn't technically. A Disney film. It was. Um, it was actually Touchstone Pictures, which is actually a subsidiary of Disney. Uh, yeah. I said Touchstone Pictures, the same guys that did. Um, Nightmare, they did Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Um, so I think in that regard, we could class Who Framed Roger Rabbit as technically a Disney film because yes, it's got Disney characters and it's got Warner Brother characters as well, but it's got Disney characters in it. And it was done by a Disney subsidiary studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if 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 you ever decide to do Who Framed Roger Rabbit, it definitely get me back on for that, please. And, I, and I'll, I'll actually I'll actually leave that to you guys. Uh, uh, to you guys watching right now, do you want me to review Who Framed Roger Rabbit for this series? If so, let me know in the comments. Um, as for Test of Time, I also yeah. gave it an eight as well. I I do agree with you. Um, there are a couple of moments in there that I don't. Imagine would fly with kids nowadays. Yeah. Um, even kids back when I was younger. Again, I didn't watch this film when I was a kid, and I don't know why. I don't know if maybe because my parents had seen it, and they were like, yeah, "No, maybe maybe Michael was uh, a bit too sensitive for this." Uh, and I can see why because again, yeah. there was that pheasant scene where I actually had to pause the movie for thirty seconds. And yeah, that's it. Like, like, and 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 that and that and that's the thing that um, and that's the thing that. Um, that's the thing that uh, my parents ended up doing when it came to uh, um, introducing me to films uh, for the first time. I so say they would they would normally they would either um, have a look at the age certificate and think would this be okay for me, especially especially the P, especially the PG films. I mean uh, the U rated films, no problem, but yeah. but but like I say the PG rated films, they thought would this be okay for him? Yeah. Um, but of course. Going by the, um, but of course, um, seeing the seeing the age certificate, it's a case of if that's it. If it's a but, if it if the age certificate is um, hi, uh, higher than his age, let's say for me being seven, for example, and the age certificate yeah. for a film was twelve, my parents would not let me watch that film until I hit that age. I know my mum was very heavily in that camp as well. My dad was. Whatever. So whenever my mum was out, uh, I would always watch uh, films that I was maybe a bit too young to watch. Uh, yeah. Whenever it was just me and my dad. So. Uh. Okay. Okay. And, and, and that's okay. and, and and it was the same when it came. It was the same when it came to um, uh, video games. Uh, it was the same when it came to video games uh, as well. Uh, I think. Mm-hmm. But um, I say and uh, I say some 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 people criticised. Um, some people criticized my mum when I was younger for like, be, for like being oh you be you're being so you're being too overly protective of um of your son. No, she wasn't. She was being no. a really good parent. And if uh, and if and if I end up having kids of my own, I'm gonna have that same approach. They want to play GTA? Nope. Gotta wait till you eat. <laughs> just, 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 just PG just, for a reason. Yeah, uh, yeah exa- exactly. Those age certificates are there for a reason. Yeah. 
But anyway, taking all those scores into account and running them through the uh, appropriate calculation measures, and we end up with a percentage score of 86%. 86. That's... That's... That's high. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's... I say, 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 what, say, what am I what am I actually what I'm what I'm actually gonna do uh, in the editing process, you guys will see this once it's all edited together. Uh what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna have like some sort of um scoreboard up um seeing where each of the films ranks as far as their rare percentage is concerned. Mm -hmm. And and I'll I'll work out I'll work out I'll work out some sort of tie break system if they end up being tied on percentage and then and then we'll go through um how how to break that tie based on the various um I'll, I'll work something out on the tie break front yeah but anyway yeah. that's it for the that's it for the uh for this installment of kingdom of isolation um time to head back out into the real world but next time you're gonna see me i'm gonna have my mum with me for the next um uh, uh for the next um a handful of uh, reviews going through the World War Two films, the first of which being Saludos Amigos. Amigos. And that is the first, and that's the first um, big screen appearance, to my knowledge, uh, in in a uh, in a full length film. Um, nice. of uh, Donald Duck. Yep. Well, I've not seen it myself, so that's it. That's it. I've not seen any of the World War Two films either, but um. But yeah, I hope you enjoy them. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm sure like, if your mum likes them, I'm sure, I'm sure she's it, got I a good taste. I said she's actually she's actually watching them. Uh, I said, I said, I said she said she was going to be uh, watching them, um, for um, coming on board with their uh, with this series as well. And then once those World War Two of World War Two films are out of the way, we're back into business with full length films uh, with Cinderella. But until then. And until uh, I see you for Saludos Amigos, uh, we will see you guys again uh, very soon. Thanks very much for watching. And if you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with what I do on my channel, uh, hit the subscribe button uh, down at the bottom. And um, make sure you turn on that uh, notification bell. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss anything I do on this channel if you want to keep up to date with what I do on this uh, uh, channel. I've got... Uh, so I've, I've got a couple of previous videos um, for you guys to check out. I've got the previous episode of Kingdom of Isolation where I, where Michael was uh, on board reviewing Dumbo, and I've got my, uh, I've got my previous video that I did uh, for this, um, uh, the previous video that I've recorded for this channel. Um, I say they're 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 both um, uh, here on the on the left and on the right. You've got my um, you've got my Kingdom of Isolation uh, playlist. So and. Um, I, I, I just want to, I just, I just want to say one more thing before I go, guys. Um, uh, if you, if you guys, if you guys keep watching all, all the way to the end, it will definitely help the uh, YouTube algorithm. Uh, you can leave a comment as well, and uh, let's say, let's say thumbs up. Let's say it will help the uh, algorithm uh, uh, a lot. And um, I say, hopefully, we'll see you uh, next time for the next episode of Kingdom of um, um, uh, Kingdom of Isolation. But uh, <laughs> But yeah, uh, all that's left to say is uh, to everybody watching, be awesome, be a legend, and above all else, be yourself. See you later, folks. Ta-da, folks.